Hey everyone, it's your buddy Crypto Profit back with another video. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at Ethereum down 14.61% right now. We do see a lot of crypto assets in those double digits, specifically altcoins, making, you know, internet computer going to 22% of a decrease, Chainlink at 19% of a decrease, you know, Theta up to 16%, pretty much, like I said, every cryptocurrency is struggling heavily, uh, you know, Bitcoin at 11% decrease, and like I said, Ethereum is at that 14.61% decrease in the last 24 hours alone if we take a look at the last really month of ethereum it's gone down about 31 to 32 percent and that's pretty substantial we actually saw a dip all the way down to about 1728 we'll see if this dip is as strong as the previous and see if ethereum actually dips below that two thousand dollar mark yet again but in the last year we do still see a 864.47 percent increase which just shows how much ethereum has really grown in the last year still uh you know with these massive crashes recently um i do want to talk about what ethereum is before we jump into some articles explaining where ethereum is going to end up uh so i've talked about this accumulation period in a lot of my altcoin price prediction videos we talked about june and july being mostly a sideways trend with a ton of volatility well we're seeing exactly that we're seeing a ton of volatility to start off June for the most part. We've seen, you know, basically two dips at this point. And I do think we're going to continue to see more. Um, you know, I think we are going to have slow recovery rates after these dips. And a lot of people are going to expect us to be jumping back into that bull run or bull run part two. But do understand that, you know, on the way, we are going to have recoveries into more dips. Uh, by the end of July, I do expect us to have a chance at breaking out. I think a lot of altcoins, as well as Ethereum and Bitcoin specifically, will have a great opportunity to really break out of this uh, accumulation, manipulation, slash FUD stage. I think a lot of coins are really struggling, obviously, right now with all of this FUD going on. But, you know, for the most part, Ethereum is a coin that still holds so much value. And I think the future of Ethereum is going to continue to be great. So we'll talk about price predictions, um, in, you know, I guess in where we think Ethereum is going to end up uh, at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But if you guys aren't already subscribed to the video, or I guess to the channel, make sure to quickly subscribe, hit that subscribe button, uh, you know, like the video, turn notifications on and leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of, uh, you know, my, how I do my videos or really where you guys think Ethereum is going to end up by the end of the year. So first off, I do want to say, like I said, what's the about of Ethereum? So Ethereum is a decentralized computing platform that uses ETH, also called Ether, to pay transaction fees or gas. Developers can use Ethereum to run decentralized applications or dApps and issue new crypto assets known as Ethereum tokens. So taking a look at the very first article, it talks about what we've talked about, you know, previously in a crypto news segment. It was Ethereum's billionaire founder admits Ethereum 2.0 is delayed. So obviously we knew this was the case for some time now, but uh, he's kind of going over. But uh, Buterin himself is actually kind of covering why uh, Ethereum 2.0 is being delayed and why it's taking so long to really complete. So he actually talks about this um, in an interview and says, one of the biggest problems I found with our project is not the technical problems, it's the problems related with people. We have a lot of internal conflicts uh, in these five years. So that's definitely not something you want to hear. Obviously, uh, Ethereum saw many shakeups in the team with seven co-founders leaving the project and Buterin is the only founder remaining in the project. In the same interview, Buterin shared the biggest people lesson he learned. If you're building a team, it's important to know who you are working with. Uh, obviously, you would assume that is a good thing to know, and uh, Buterin obviously learning that along the way. So next, we have ex-head of China's digital yuan effort says CBDCs could operate on Ethereum. Central bank digital currencies will one day be smart and not merely digital versions of cash. So this would definitely be big for Ethereum if we call, uh, you know, had more use cases for Ethereum. Obviously, that's going to increase the price of Ethereum. So the utility behind Ethereum is already pretty substantial, and uh, you know this would definitely help push Ethereum up even farther. Uh, you know, the digital Juan, I don't think it's going to compete with cryptocurrencies in a way that uh, a lot of people are worried about. I don't think, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, I guess that special crypto or I guess that special crypto competitor that, uh, like I said, everyone is worried about. So taking a look at uh, more into this, if you guys want to deep dive, you can definitely do so. It's Coindesk.com. It basically talks about, you know, really the director of now science and technology supervision bureau of the China Securities Regulatory Commission said over the weekend that CBDCs shouldn't attempt to be just a digital form of physical cash, but should incorporate smart contract functionality. So we are starting to see that smart contract functionality uh, really needing to take place uh, for that digital wand to really be successful. Taking a look at the next one, we see Bitcoin and Ethereum cryptocurrencies plunge following FBI seizure. So this is obviously not good for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, you know, a lot of people actually, I read this, like I said, into the last crypto uh, news segment. And, you know, it's crazy to see this kind of take place. So a lot of people think that uh, the FBI was able to hack in and just take the money out. That's not what happened. Obviously, they tracked 
where these transfers went to. They found the wallet and then they, you know, found the private key for the wallet. So they did, you know, anyone can get into any uh, wallet with a private key. That's just obvious. So, um, you know, the FUD is just kind of merely just wrong. Um, but, you know, today's FUD is that the FBI seizure of the Colonial Pipeline ransom means that Bitcoin is easily hackable. Of course, that's not anywhere close to the case as Bitcoin OG Adam Back explains, but in a bear market and Bitcoin crypto is surely in one. So, um, we are even seeing the hint of bad news is enough to send prices lower. And that's exactly like, like I said, what we're seeing right now. So he thinks we're in a bear market, I believe. Um, I believe that's what he's saying. But, you know, realistically, I still don't think we're in a bear market. I still think we're in that uh, kind of middle section right between uh, a bull market part one and part two. And we've seen that in, you know, previous graphs and uh, charts that I've shown you guys. I do think, you know, by the end of July, we have a potential to break out. It could even be later than that. But realistically, uh, you know, be, not before July, in my opinion, not before late July, in my opinion, are we going to see a chance or opportunity for crypto or altcoins to really break out of this, uh, you know, this bearish looking mark. So taking a look at the last, uh, well, I guess we have one more article after this one, but you know the other price indicator turns bearish for the first time since October. Momentum has deteriorated, supporting a lower high compared with May's peak. So you can you can really start to you know see this dip taking place and this crash continuing on. Um, and we've talked about this. You know, I do think you know we are going to have a bearish looking uh, you know two months where you know just a sideways trend for the most part until uh, we do break out again. And you know I think it's going to be sooner rather than later that we do break out. But uh, a lot of people are you know even suggesting suggesting even like, you know, four to five months and six months or seven months or eight months. I think it'll be more than likely about two to, you know, two to six months is my opinion. Uh, you know, the earliest I do see a breaking out, like I said, is late July. Jumping into the next one, we see Norton Antivirus adds Ethereum cryptocurrency mining. So this is cool as well. So Norton 360 customers will have access to Ethereum mining feature in the coming weeks, the company said. Cryptocurrency mining works by using a computer's hardware to do complex calculations in an exchange for a reward. We won't actually deep dive into this because, like I said, you know, it is something that you have to have Norton 360 to really utilize, but uh, it does have a graphic right here explaining really how it all works. So it looks like current exchange rate uh, it shows one ETH for $2,463 at the time of the screenshot. And it also shows your next payout and uh, how much you're making per day. So 0 0.00049 ETH per day, it looks like uh, earning one dollar and 20 cents per day. So it's obviously not a ton, but if you have Norton 360, you can definitely take advantage of it. Jumping back to our price now, I do want to give it a quick refresh, see where we're at. Uh, we are at $2,400 uh, at 24-hour period, going down about 14.61%. A nice little increase, though, from that 2300 to about 2400 So we'll see if this continues on, if we actually see a good recovery, or if we continue to see just a small jump up until, uh, you know, into another big crash. I mean, it's definitely possible that we see, like I said, Bitcoin specifically go down to all the way to, uh, you know, 27, 28 K. I do think, you know, Ethereum has what it takes to actually stay above $2,000, but we'll see if that does take place. Like I said, we've seen it go all the way down to about $1,728 May 23rd. So there has been a, a couple dips that really have taken Ethereum down to lower levels. And we'll see if that does take place yet again. But, you know, for the most part, like I said, by the end of July, I do expect that being the earliest time to really see potential behind Ethereum and Bitcoin again. Um, you know, I, I do think, you know, these coins are great. We continue to see great adoption taking place across the entire, you know, crypto world itself. But, uh, you know, I do think it is going to take, unfortunately, some time to uh, really get this accumulation period going before we can see another bull run part two take place. But, you know, realistically, by the end of the bull market or by the end of the year, I do still see, see Ethereum right around that uh, potential, you know, 8 to 12k mark at the very least. Uh, a lot of people are seeing even bigger numbers, but you know, 8 to 12k is mine. Um, if you actually watch people like BitBoy Crypto, I think he actually talked about Ethereum early in this year. Um, I don't want to call him out, but I think he, you know, he did say something like, I forget what it was exactly. It was a lot. It was like 20 to 50k or something like that. And uh, I just don't see that happening by the end of the bull market. But you know, I, I think we'd all love to see it happen. So uh, we'll continue to keep you guys up to date with crypto information, obviously related to Ethereum as well as so many other altcoins on the channel. So if you guys want to stay up to date with that crypto news and information, make sure to quickly subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on and like the video. I'll see you guys all in the next one.